Yo, Elliot, my wife gave birth to our son in a hospital after a pretty harrowing experience at the birth center. I have a deep fear of getting her pregnant again and giving birth at the hospital or home birthing, considering how the world is going right now. The hospital in Austin, Texas was great last year, but in Austin will be the first place to adopt crazy vaccine rules. Do you have any advice or counsel on easing my concerns with this? So I do. I mentioned earlier that I tend to be kind of ahead of the curve with a lot of things. And one of the things that I ventured into when my wife first got pregnant back in 2002 was natural childbirthing and home birthing uh, because I became aware of the, uh, the abuses and the trauma that's associated with giving birth in the medical industry. You know, for thousands of years, women gave birth without having doctors or, or having surgeons around, right? Like now the surgeon wants to be there. Why? Because they want to cut you open as soon as possible. I had my friend had the same experience where he was like, his wife wanted to have natural childbirth, but as soon as he got there, the doctor's like, well, you know, it's gonna be a matter of time before we gotta cut you open and take the baby out, right? Which is barbaric. She had, there was no reason to cut the baby out except the fact that he had to get back to his golf game, right? So anyway, um, all my children are naturally birthed, three home births. I caught the children, right? Uh, now, I am not an expert and I'm not a doctor, but we hired midwives, right? So we hired midwives. These are women who have a nursing degree, but they also have a, uh, they have a leaning towards natural. They want you to have natural births, right? In the home. So we had a woman, she, she was there. Actually, she wasn't there. Two of my children, I caught myself, but she was on the phone. She was on her way, right? Cause my wife, when it, my wife's labors were like that. It's like, as soon as she felt like she was in labor, it was like, okay, countdown before the baby's here, right? It was quick. So a lot of times the, the uh, midwife it took a little while, but all my kids came out perfect, natural, normal, and it was just me and my wife at home, right in the bedroom. Hey, here's here comes the baby. That's the way it's been done for thousands and thousands of years. Now that's not to say that they there weren't um, there weren't situations where a mother and a child or both died um, because they would have needed support. Well, that's why you have a midwife. And guess what? The midwife has the hospital on call, right? So if you must go to the hospital, I'm just trying to get my screen focus back. If you must go to the hospital because it is legitimately an emergency, not just in case of shit, if it's legitimately emergency, right? And the, the midwife has the hospital on call, well, then you can go. But I would never step foot in a hospital uh, for something as normal and natural as childbirth, right? But I'm not just saying that because I'm a rebel, right? I'm saying that because I dove into the practice. I dove into the study of it. And so I'm going to share with you a couple of resources that I read. The minute I found out my wife was pregnant, I started reading about this stuff. Uh, here's a book called Male Practice. See it there? Male Practice by uh, Robert Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn. It's about how doctors manipulate women, right? It's an industry, right? The 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 Childbirth is an industry, right? They're, they're making money. It's not because they have your best interest in mind or that it's the best way to do it, right? Because one, for example, when you go to a hospital, the, they have the woman lay down this way and put her legs up to make the baby come out, which is not natural. That does, that, in fact, that is the wrong way. And I'm not a woman, right? But my wife has had babies. That's the wrong way for a woman to have a baby. You don't lay down so the baby is like stuck up in your body and then you got to push to get the body down. No, you squat over, right? Here I am showing you how to give birth. You, the woman squats over. My wife leaned over the bed and squatted down. That's how my babies came out, right? Like, I don't want to uh, make it like, you know, analogous to making a poop, but that's the way it is, right? Because you got to squeeze down, not lay back and squeeze up. Just that one thing alone, and I learned that by reading this book, that one thing alone made me like, oh, duh. They don't have your best interest in mind. They want to make it hard for you to have the baby. Why? So they can charge you for a C-section. So they can charge you for extra drugs, right? My wife didn't use any pain medication. Why? Because the baby came out fast. Why did the baby come out fast? Because she wasn't laying on her back. She was squatting down so that the baby can be pushed down, right? So there are all kinds of wrong things that they do in the hospital that 
make it so that there's trauma. You have a traumatized experience in the hospital. And obviously you had some harrowing experiences because children aren't meant to be born in the hospital. It's good that the hospital's there. Don't get me wrong. It's good that there are medical professionals if something goes wrong. But going to the hospital makes shit go wrong. Do you see that? Do you see how that works? Come here so that we come here so that you need us rather than you need us so you come here. Do you see? Do you see the slight trickery? But anyway, read the book, right? Male practice. And then this guy, I ended up buying all his books because he was such a G in that book. He's got another book called um, Confessions of a Medical Heretic, Robert Mendelssohn, M-E-N-D-E-L-S-O-H-N. And then how to raise a healthy doctor, how to, how to raise a healthy child in spite of your doctor. I read all this guy's books. And this first book might even be out of print. It looks like it's very old, but it's still here on Amazon. Don't take my word for it. I'm not, I don't pretend to be an expert, but I am a, I'm a concerned father. I'm a concerned parent. I'm concerned about my wife. I'm concerned about our children. So what does someone who's concerned do? They consult. I consult these books. I, we, Colleen and I took natural childbirthing classes. You know that? We took Bradley classes, right? Bradley, natural birthing classes. Bradley natural birthing classes, not Lamaze. Lamaze is a joke. Bur natural, uh, Bradley natural birthing classes teach you everything about how to legitimately have that baby at home, naturally. Lamaze just teaches you how to breathe so that you don't need drugs, which is good. That's one part of it, but ultimately, we gotta go back to nature. We gotta go back to the way things should always were, right? Again, I don't want people to think, oh, Elliot is, is archaic and doesn't, uh, doesn't respect modern uh, inventions and, and modern progress. No, that's not the case at all. We have just made that our God. And as a result, we've fallen prey to all kinds of bad things, right? Like just, it don't, man, sometimes, I'm, I'm not a smart man. That's, and you know, I never did well in school. But I could just see certain things that people take for granted and I'm like, I don't know. That just don't seem right to me, right? And then the whole idea, right? Just think about this. A baby's supposed to come down. I already did this, so I'm just kind of reiterating. The baby's supposed to come down. Why am I laying up? Hmm. Hmm. Something don't add up. And what doesn't add up is that they don't have your best interest in mind, right? As soon as your baby comes out of the vagina, you know what they want to do? Whisk it away and give it all kinds of shots. Put shit in its eyes, Right? They do all kinds of weird things to your baby that you don't know anything about when they, they take the baby away. But what have, what, even a dog, even a cow, I have cows. You don't take the baby away from the mama right away, right? Why do they do that to us? Why is it that as soon as the baby comes out in the hospital, they whisk the baby away so the baby has no bonding time with the mother? As soon as my babies came out, they, we laid it right on my mother, their mother's chest and the baby start feeding right there. First thing the baby does is this, right? And so as the baby's doing this, the mom is right there, oh, to suckle. But you take that baby off and the baby's doing this, and all the baby sees is bright lights in its eyes and some stranger jabbing it with, with needles. It's like, what the fuck kind of, what kind of introduction to life is this? That's why so many people are traumatized. People are traumatized because of that birth experience, right? And the whole C-section thing. Do you know that 90% of C-sections are not necessary? But they're profitable, right? They want, to cut you, they want to cut your wife open. You go to the hospital, they want to cut your wife open at ASAP. That's the first thing on their mind is how quickly can we get this woman to buy our surgery, to buy our, our technique, right? Sure, there's, there's, there's medical techniques, but I don't have to buy every single one. I'm not, I don't have to be a customer for everything, but the medical industry makes it such that, you, that they make you think that you need their stuff. No, I don't need your stuff. Why do I need your stuff? Why do I need you to help me do something natural, right? This is a natural thing. This is a normal thing. This has happened since day one. Jesus was born in the manger, right? He didn't, he didn't need a surgeon there. Right? Mary didn't need a surgeon there to cut her belly open just in case. Right? <laughs> uh, anyway, so I'm just kind of in a ranting mood here. My opinion is don't let this stop you from having more children. But 
educate yourself. The problem with people today is that they don't know, right? Didn't God say something to the effect of, right, people suffer for they do not know? People suffer because they don't know. And part of the reason they don't know is because we live in a brainwashed culture, right? And they've been teaching us all kinds of wrong think for the past, you know, six generations. Not only do we have common sense, not only can we think, right? Something don't look right. Trust yourself when something don't look right. But we live in the age of information. If something don't seem right, go and do some research. People will do all kinds of research about dumb stuff. I'm going to buy a new car. I know people that will spend months researching cars what kind of engine they want, what kind of transmission, what kind of, all kinds of aerodynamics, and, uh, and then they do all the extras, all this for a car. But you get your wife pregnant and you just say, well, okay, well, okay. I'll see you at the hospital. What the, what? L learn, learn the things that are important. We spend so much time learning dumb stuff. How about, Back to nature, learning how to do things that our ancestors always knew how to do, right? Give birth. I was reading uh, about, um, I, think it was a, I think it was a book called Wrath of, Wrath of Grapes or something like that, Grapes of Wrath. I don't remember who the author was. It was like a classic book. It was about a Chinese couple that were living on the, on the land somewhere. And, the, and in the story, I was so shocked. I read this when I was like in my early 20s. The woman was... Uh, she was out working in the field, right? Like the ox was pulling the plow and she was like riding the plow or something. And she was pregnant. She was like nine months pregnant. And it was John Steinbeck. I don't know if it was Grapes of Wrath, Lucas, but it was John Steinbeck, one of his books. It might've been Grapes of Wrath. And there, there was a scene in the book where the woman's, you know, she's working. Well, she's got to do work, you got to work. And she squats down. The baby comes out. She cleans off the baby, wraps her up, boom, boom, and that's it. I don't. I think she may even went back to work, <laughs> right? But or mice and men. I don't know. But I just remember reading a book like that. But she was just going about her life like it was a normal thing. It was a normal thing. She didn't need the ambulance. She didn't need uh, ten doctors around her and 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 someone with a scalpel ready to cut her open. She just knew what to do. She just squatted down, and gave birth to that baby. Right? I know there are good people like, Elliot, you don't know anything about being a woman. You have no interest saying that. Oh, okay. I don't know anything about women and I have no place saying that. But then why do you go to a male dominated profession, right? All these men. That's why the book is called Male Practice. I told you. Why? This is so funny. Women were so quick to tell a man who has his wife or his, his friend's best interest in, in mind about you know, something with regard to women. You have no right saying that. But the first thing they're going to do is go to a hospital. There's what? It's all men. It's all men that look at you like a customer. Ah, how much can we charge the insurance company for, her, for all this? Right? How quickly can we get her onto the, onto the um, uh, chopping block? The name of the book, some of you guys are asking me, is Male Practice. M-A-L-E. You see that? M-A-L-E Practice. How Doctors Manipulate Women. Old book by Dr. Robert Mendelssohn, MD. So, you know, that's one good place to begin. And you can go down the rabbit hole from there, dude. Hope that helps. Don't. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.